You're watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. With us, we have Dr. Jerome Cha. Dr. Cha, welcome to the program. Pleasure to be here. Okay, good. I know you brought a lot of photos, so we're going to get to as many of those as possible. Now, for people that don't know your practice in Tulsa, who's the typical dental implant patient that comes to see you? We have mainly two types of dental implant patients. One is the people who, who's been wearing dentures for a long time, and they're really tired of dentures not uh, fitting well, they're hurting. So we give our patients a brand new set of teeth, uh, top and bottom, that don't come out. That are just supported by dental implants. Right. Okay. Now, the other group, you say, these are people that feel like they're headed to dentures. They have really bad teeth. Yes, if they have really bad teeth, uh, of course, we try to save as many teeth as we can. But if we can't, then we could replace segments of the teeth that are missing with dental implants. Okay. That would uh, function just like your natural teeth. Now, we said at the top of the show, no more dentures. I mean, is that your goal? Do you think that the future of dentistry will be where nobody is wearing traditional dentures? That means they'll all be attached to something like dental implants? I think that's really the future of dentistry, replacing dentures with something that doesn't come out. Okay. Because nobody likes dentures. I know a couple of denture wearers and they never complain about anything. Are you saying that all denture wearers are not really that happy about having I, them? You know, my mother had denture. Uh, I know many people who are wearing dentures. I don't know anybody who loves dentures. They just put up with Well, you're it. center. Um, you do a lot of things right there. I guess how dental implants are typically done is you go to one place where they do the surgery, another place where they do the imaging, and then another place where the doctor puts the teeth on top. You do it all right there. Yes, we have everything under we have everything under one roof. Okay. We have from CT scan to surgical suite, uh, and we also have a custom dental lab where if there's any particular cosmetic issues we need to address, we could do all in one uh, place. So you have the lab there, you have training in the surgical, and then the, you guys call it the restorative, putting the teeth on top? Absolutely. So because there's only one person involved, mm -hmm. you could probably pass some of the savings on to the patient. Yes, we have, matter of fact, because we do everything under one roof, there's less overhead, okay. which means that we could pass on that saving to our patient. So in, in Oklahoma, are there a lot of people wearing dentures? Oh or headed to dentures? Yes, oh my gosh, uh, Randy. I just came across this uh, recent sur a survey done by ADA, American Dental Association. Uh, it says that 15% of the U.S. population are denture wearers. In Tulsa, we have approximately 700,000 people. And if ADA survey is correct, we have about 60,000 people, 60 to 90,000. Just 000, in Tulsa. Yeah, 60 to 90,000 people wearing dentures. And the biggest stadium we have yeah. is it's called the One Oak Baseball Field. Okay. And it's full capacity. We could sit 8,000 people, which means that we have to have about nine of those fields to uh, seat denture wearers in Tulsa. So alone. if there's so many people in Oklahoma wearing a denture, then why aren't they all coming in to get a brand new set of teeth that don't come in and out supported by implants? What's your take? I believe number one reason is the fear. Fear okay. of pain. You know, most people associate huge amount of pain with surgery but it's so much easier nowadays with IV sedation okay and the medications that we prescribe before and after patients are you know super relaxed when they come in we start the IV they fall asleep and when we're done they wake up with a new set of teeth that doesn't come out and looks great compared to what they started uh, and afterwards they always ask me how much pain am I gonna be in yeah, okay. Uh, but we have great protocols or medications that we prescribe. So most people experience very mild. Do some people like refuse medication and they just want over the counter stuff? Some people can very easily manage with just over the counter medication. I had an uh, 80 year old lady okay. who received a top and bottom dental implants, and within two days, she was out in golf course playing golf. <laughs> okay, okay. So you could golf with your, with your new teeth. Absolutely. How soon can they eat? I mean, if everything works out right, how soon can they eat? You could eat immediately, starting with something like pasta, uh, eggs, uh, mashed potato. But before they know it, they're eating uh, something harder, like uh, salad. 
uh, pasta al dente, uh, you know, a, a soft steak. And within three months, you're back to eating corn on the cob, uh, crunching on carrots, celery, and whatever your heart So you desire. can even bite like a carrot with your front teeth that's raw? Absolutely. So it doesn't matter. You can eat whatever you want. Right. Nuts? Nuts. Now, only thing that I caution is don't do anything that will break your natural teeth. Okay. Right? So you don't want to abuse them. Like uh, I have patients stripping wires with their new teeth. You don't want to do that. Okay? okay. So you do have to take care of them. All right. But you could eat whatever your heart's desire. How old can you be to get this procedure done? You know, the, the age really isn't the issue. Uh, as long as the patient is in healthy uh, state, healthy enough to uh, receive dental implants, age really is not an issue. We have patients in uh, 80s getting dental implants. What's your oldest patient? The uh, oldest patient I had was 80-year-old lady, but okay. I had the 75-year-old gentleman. Uh, he was a retired attorney, and he, he was headed towards losing all his teeth. Okay. You know, he was, uh, there's nothing much left there, so we need we, so he would have had to get a denture. Exactly. Okay. And that would have been a horrible thing for him. Uh, so we uh, removed the teeth that he couldn't use. We gave him some implants. We put the teeth that just locked in, and we just gave him a beautiful, bright, white smile. And he ended up uh, finding this beautiful young lady as a girlfriend. I, <laughs> so it's very exciting to see uh, him kind of rediscovering the life and enjoying the life and reclaiming the youth. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a reputation also as a cosmetic dentist out there. So as a cosmetic guy, a guy that's been doing porcelain veneers, things like that, does it make you better, you think, creating the smiles for, you know, supported by dental implants? I think so because uh, many of the big complaints that, complaints that I receive from people who receive the teeth uh, that – is, is locked on by dental implants. They still have somewhat of a dental look to it. Okay. And uh, most of my patients don't want that look, okay. kind of a stock-made look. So they always ask me, can you make this look uh, more natural? Can you make sure that it doesn't look like dentures? So we go through uh, great details to make things beautiful but slightly uneven or what have you. Okay. So that nobody will know that they have denture teeth. And, you know, because we talked in the green room. I said, I feel like I could spot fake teeth walking down the street. And, and you said, not mine. Not what? mine, really. <laughs> Unless they want that. There are people who, okay. for some odd reason, they want perfectly straight teeth and kind of pick a fence look. We could certainly do that. But, you know, if we have choice, we want to make sure that they just look beautiful, uh, even though they are uh, teeth that are supported by implants, uh, nobody will know that there are not natural teeth. Yeah, but what about the people with bad gums, like gum disease? Can they do this procedure with the bleeding gums and bad gums? Right, Randy, this is the, this is the dental implants really are the perfect for people who have bad gum disease okay. uh, or teeth that you can't save. Uh, because once we remove the teeth, we essentially remove all the bacteria that's causing gum disease, so we start fresh. Okay. So we establish a very healthy foundation. We put nice, strong implants. So you get a second life on your, in your mouth that pain, swelling, uh, bad breath, all, all goes away. All goes away. Uh, and you start fresh. So what do they like more? Do they like the way it looks, or do they like the fact that they can eat whatever they want again? Randy, it's a combination of everything. Some people just come in because they want to get the pain gone. They want to, uh, other people like to just enjoy the food again. Okay. Uh, for some people, the, the way they look is very important. But all of them, when we restore their teeth, it, they get everything. They okay. get the looks. You could, you know, eat the food that you've been avoiding. Uh, now they start getting compliments. Their family starts saying, wow, your smile looks beautiful. <laughs> and it just improves their self-confidence. And they open up, they go out more, they go out more, and they're more sociable, and so uh, it, it enriches their lives. So nobody, so if you don't, I mean, because like we talked, this is right. not for everybody, but if you don't like your teeth, you can do something about it now. I mean, like dentistry is a lot of patchwork, like mm -hmm. uh, fix this, fix that, patch this, and, and we talk, it's like implants is like a third set of teeth, like you get your teeth back. Exactly. Is that an overstatement? Or no, that's, that's absolutely true. Uh, 
You know, there are so many people who are so frustrated with uh, the, the continuous dental procedures that have failed over and over. Uh, so they just keep up and say, you know, I'm not going to do anything. And if it falls out, I'll just get a denture. But you don't have to do that anymore. Now, you brought some photos. What are we looking at? Yes, I brought some photos. This is Angie. Okay. Angie's been wearing dentures since she was in her, her 20s. She had her natural teeth on the lower. Uh, they weren't in, really in the great shape, but we didn't want to remove them. We wanted to restore them. But Angie's thing was that she did not want dentures. She was sick and tired of dentures. Okay. Thoroughly. We talked about getting our new denture, some aesthetic looking dentures, but no, that, that wasn't, that's, that's not going to happen. But what's interesting about Angie, let me show you this uh, after photo. Okay, yeah. okay. Would you say she looks a little bit different? <laughs> she, she looks younger. Yeah, she looks younger, right? Uh, and maybe more attractive, would you say? Yes, yeah. that's true. That's true. So uh, we made her uh, new teeth on the upper that doesn't come out, and we don't have palate that's covering the entire palate. And Angie is really a great wine connoisseur. Okay. Uh, she loves this fine, uh, uh, intricate. I'm not a wine drinker, so I really don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but she would explain these things. But she tells me that she could taste these uh, little nuances and subtleties of wine better now because the palate is open. And, uh, she could eat things and what have you. And she noticed that her lower teeth are not quite as nice as the upper. Okay. So she came back uh, about a year later, and she wanted me to uh, place veneers and what have you to match the upper teeth that uh, we made her. So uh, she's incredibly happy. Uh, I believe she got married shortly after we made her new t set of teeth. That's nice. <laughs> yes. Because I guess it's good for the self-confidence. Oh, my you know, goodness. And self-confidence is attractive. Absolutely. Self-confidence that Smile uh, does is, is like magical. And let me show you another patient. All right. This is Sharon. Sharon had been uh, grinding her teeth for a long while. So she lost all the back teeth, uh, unfortunately, and she was definitely headed towards denture. Okay. But she's... Uh, known denture wearers in her family. She really didn't want to go that route. Well, that's why they go to you, right? So they right. don't have to get a denture. Right. Okay. So what we did for her was uh, very similar to what we did on Angie. We gave her a brand new set of teeth that doesn't come out. And she, again, look at that before and after. <laughs> looks good. I mean, she really looks more balanced. Her face has grown and taken away some of the age off of her face. Because she's too young to be wearing a denture. Oh, my goodness. She's, I think, about my age, and I can't imagine myself wearing denture for myself. Uh, so it's really great service for our patients. So when she looks at, in the mirror for the first time, right. what happens? No, she told me that uh, her son told her that she's smiling a whole lot more. Well, that's nice. And how can we put price on that, right? Yeah. Your son noticing that you're happier and you smile more. Brandy, let me show you this patient. Okay. This, this is uh, Linda, and I love Linda. Okay. <laughs> Linda is a super sweet lady. What struck me when she came in and started talking about what she wants, uh, I, I was asking her a lot of dental questions, what happened and what have you, but Linda really didn't want to really talk about anything about dental stuff. Okay. She wanted to tell me stories about her daughter, her children, and grandchildren. So I knew she is a very caring lady. lady. Okay. So I thought to myself, you know, Linda really needs a beautiful smile that matches her soul, the beautiful soul. So what we did for Linda uh, she was missing a lot of back teeth, okay. uh, top and bottom. And Linda was fully expecting denture, right? So I told Linda, hey, uh, we could save some of these front teeth, give you some implants on the back, and restore your mouth that way. Okay. And let me show you this. All right, yeah? all right. You look like you're proud of this one. I am so happy with Linda. Okay. Look at this after photo. Oh, yeah. She looks happy. Isn't that look incredible. I mean, it doesn't even look like the same person. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Linda told me, you know, I just wanted some teeth to eat with, uh, but now she's getting so many compliments. She looks incredible. And she sent me a nice review saying that, gosh, why did I wait this long? I wish I'd have done this years ago. And she's really telling everybody, don't wait. You know, life is too short. 
Because that's the challenge, right? I right. mean, because nobody likes going to the dentist. Right. So you put it off and you put it off until you're in so much pain, I guess you can't handle it anymore. Right. I mean, do you still hear that? I mean, do you hear, hey, no offense, doctor, but I can't stand the dentist? You know, I hear that quite often, but I know uh, I could win them over. Okay. Once I, they, once I fix their teeth, they love us. And they can't wait to see us back again. So, uh, you know, a person like this, let's say you take somebody like a denture wearer and you give them a brand new upper and lower set of teeth that don't come out. Mm -hmm. What's the maintenance? I mean, like maybe every six months, just get them cleaned. Uh, and, and, and you said, and we talked about this, that people that used to hate going to the dentist, now they want to go to the dentist. Right. The they love it. Uh, you know, it's no different than natural teeth. I tell people to treat them like your natural teeth. You have to get your teeth checked and uh, clean like your natural teeth, whether you have implants or natural teeth. You know, I, I love seeing transformation of people's lives through uh, changing smile. And I had this one gentleman that uh, he's a super smart, uh, talented civil engineer, okay. right? And he came to me and he told me that, you know, I'm not really happy with the, with the way my smile looks. And he really did have kind of a terrible teeth. So he would present these huge projects to future clients and he will not get the contract. So he was getting very frustrated because he was trying so hard to hide his smile when he... It was affecting his presentation. Yeah, he, and then it came across as uh, him not being as confident about his skills and what have you. But inside, he knew that wasn't the truth. So what we did was we fixed up his smile. Now he looks amazing, right? Okay. And now he's getting contracts left and right. He's traveling to Asia. He's traveling to Middle East, Europe. I mean, he is just exploding. His career has taken off. So, you know, I sometimes wonder how much is it worth uh, to invest a little bit in yourself to get that type of huge return, not only in your career and not only in your financial reward, but all the other stuff that people don't tell me, like how much has it changed people's lives through just simply making your smile uh, the way you want your smile to appear. So you say you see changes in personality, like they come in one way and now once they get their teeth, they're kind of a little bit different. Oh, yeah. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> okay. you have a very nice set of teeth, Thanks. yeah? But if you didn't, would you be doing this, right? Maybe not, maybe right, not. Right, right. So, uh, you, you know, look, and we've talked about this. People with bad teeth mm -hmm. are judged. Like in, in Hollywood, we talked about Is this. Is that true? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. If you look at all the Hollywood movies, how do we portray bad guys or not so smart people? We create spaces or we stain up their teeth or make their teeth crooked. And if you look at all the evil characters, they have really sharp, pointy teeth that are stained and crooked. Okay. But look at all the good guys, right? Nice teeth. Nice teeth. That's a good point. Yeah. So, uh, because if you want to make somebody look homeless mm -hmm. or poor in the movies, they give them bad teeth. I mean, right. there's some Beverly Hills cosmetic dentists that literally make bad teeth. I know. Little fake yeah. bad teeth mm -hmm. for their people. Yeah, it's a very fascinating field, but that is absolutely true. So, we, you know, unfortunately, we judge people. Uh, through how we appear. And when we have a nice smile, not only does it make us feel better, but we become more attractive to other people. And people uh, think we are smarter, uh, we are more trustworthy. And not only that, people attract, uh, great smile attract people. So you're a dentist. It does not surprise me to hear that you think it's like one of the most important things. Absolutely, it is, Randy. <laughs> Because study, is, study after studies and surveys that are performed on all these, you know, magazines like Men's Magazine, uh, you know, people, they always say the smile is the most uh, important characteristic. Or like the top three. Right. Of uh, being attracted. Or when you're finding mate, the number one character they look for is the smile. Nice smile. Right. Nice smile. Not only that, a smile is so good for your health. It reduces your stress level. It gets uh, rid of the cortisol stress hormones, and it releases endorphin. So not only is it good for yourself, uh, just mentally, but physically, it will make you healthier. Let me show you this next patient. All right. This is Linda. Linda has a great sense of humor. Linda came to me because she noticed her teeth turning darker. Okay. And some of the teeth are starting to break. 
And if we didn't do anything, she was going to lose few teeth. Okay. So we intervened and we fixed up her teeth with some porcelain restorations. Okay. But uh, Linda shared a very personal story with me. Her mother passed away recently. And the thing that she remembers most about her mother is the, this beautiful smile she had. She, when she walked in in the room, she will light up the entire room. Nice. So I thought, you know, I want to give that back to Linda so she could have her mom with her uh, whenever she smiled. And look at this here. <laughs> it was very nice. Can you look at the, uh, the face and how it just looks like she's much more... Uh, it's hard to describe. She looks more vibrant, yeah, for sure. Exactly, vibrant. Uh, she's really liking. And you say she's funny. She, she made you guys laugh. Oh, the whole she time. had wicked sense of humor. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. good. But uh, you know, we restored her teeth with uh, porcelain restorations, uh, no implants on her, her in her case, but uh, we could save and prevent things from breaking, and she has, doesn't have to worry about her teeth turning gray anymore. Okay, good. We have time for a couple more photos. A couple more photos. This is Mary. Okay. Mary was straight headed for denture. Okay. And, uh, of course, she didn't want denture. And I'm very happy that nowadays patients are more educated. And they know So they're asking for it now. They're asking for alternative to dentures. Okay. Because they, they, they've heard horror stories. And we all know that people put up with that. But it, it's not the most comfortable thing. So she, her, she was missing all her back teeth, and the teeth that she had had, uh, you know, very advanced gum disease. So we couldn't possibly save them. So she came in one day, right? She came in like this, and the day she came in, we trans transformed her teeth to this. Very nice. We gave her top and bottom full set of teeth that doesn't come out. And she was able to eat. Supported by dental implants. Supported by dental implants. And she could eat immediately. And she's just so happy. So this is after, right? Yeah. And uh, look at how big her smile looks after we gave her teeth. Yeah, compared to the before, yeah. it's totally different. You know, before she was trying everything to hide her smile. Like she would like smile halfway or, yeah. you know, cover her mouth. But now there's no guard. She's just letting it all come out. And she loves it. Uh, she was able to eat immediately, like uh, pasta and what have you after the surgery. But what's really amazing thing about the t modern technology is that we could do all this in just one day while you're under sedation. And, uh, you know, uh, what's amazing about Mary is that now she tells me that she could eat whatever she wants to eat. You know, things that she only dreamt of eating, like salads, right? She could crunch on carrots. Uh, things that she knew she couldn't eat in the back because she was missing so many teeth in the back. Now she could, she could really enjoy the food, uh, improved her quality of life dramatically. Now, when it comes to dental implants, and, and I think we should mention that even with the best dental insurance, only covers a very small portion. Medicare, Medicaid for sure doesn't cover it. So what's the answer? Randy, we have financing. So uh, it's all affordable for most people. Okay. Uh, so it's easy. So, I mean, you have to have decent credit. You're going through outside lenders. But, but people are financing this like every week? It's majority of our patients. We're, okay. People are financing every day. So, so now there's no more excuses? Yeah, there's really no excuses. Even with sedation now? Is this true that they get like almost some patients get like amnesia? They don't even remember the procedure? Yes. Is that true? That is true. The time flies for our patients when they're under sedation. Yeah. So uh, many times they'll wake up and say, when are you going to start? And we're done. So uh, it's really easy way for our patients to go through the process. And Randy, let me, I brought this photo because, you know, power of smile, right? Okay. This young lady uh, came in covering her smile. And we're just missing one, one tooth. But it wrecked her confidence. I mean, she would not, like, do this. She would constantly cover her mouth with her hand because we're missing one tooth. So, you know, uh, for Laquisha, we could have made her flipper you know, that comes in and out. We could have ground down her adjacent teeth and made her bridge, which would be a horrible thing to do for healthy teeth. Okay. So we made a implant restored single tooth that blends in seamlessly. Wow. And look at her confidence. Like a model. Yeah. Look at her confidence. Uh, now she doesn't cover her mouth. She's just, she's uh, going back to school. She's uh, like, has, has a huge ambition now. All from just single tooth. And that is the power of smile.
Okay, good. Now, I have to ask you about this, uh, you know, the COVID-19. Yes. Extra safety measures. You say dentistry has always paid attention to aerosols, always paid attention, but you picked it up a notch. Yes, we have. I mean, uh, dentistry for decades, we've been having to deal with aerosols. So we are very familiar with how to manage aerosol. We have okay. high, uh, you know, vacuum and filters and what have you. And we cover everything up. And after each individual patient, we tear everything down, recover everything. And plus, we are checking people's temperature. So okay. if patient is uh, uh, having fever or active or, or potential for spreading COVID virus, then we just don't see the patient. So patients who are walking in, uh, possibility of spreading COVID is extremely, extremely minimal. I would say dental offices are really the safest and most uh, prepared medical facilities out there because, again, we've been dealing with mercury vapor. Uh, we've been dealing with HIV, uh, hepatitis. Okay. I mean, we're all constantly in here. So uh, uh, we're really uh, well-trained in managing aerosols and uh, any infectious disease. You know, Randy, what's different about dental offices versus hospital is that we don't see sick people. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> we screen patients over the phone. If if patient tells us that they're running a fever, they don't feel good, we just tell them, just rest at home, don't come in. So the people have this misconception that, you know, you already have sick people in dental office and you're going to somehow contract the virus from these sick people. The chance of that happening is... So most people are healthy that are going there. Absolutely. So okay. the chance good. of that, uh, you know, people getting sick from dental offices are extremely, extremely minimal. Okay, good. Now, we are out of time. Final message to the two groups of patients. So one group is the denture wearer mm -hmm. that wants to get a brand new set of upper and lower teeth that don't come out. And then the other group are the people that are kind of headed for dentures, bleeding gums, loose teeth, chipping teeth. But let's say they've heard what you had to say, but they're still afraid or, or they want to put it off. What do you say to them? I invite them in and at least know your options okay. and what's available. Uh, you know, the, the life is too short to uh, put up with things that are hurting you, painful for your mouth or painful for your uh, mind. Uh, help us restore your teeth and help us restore your hopes and dreams and live the life that you dreamt of. Good, good, good. Do you ever, are you ever on a consult and they're telling you kind of like their hard luck story about how bad their teeth are? And then you get kind of excited because you're going, boy, this is going to be good. Does that ever happen? You know, you know, I, I love it when their mouth is disaster because okay. I, I know that by the time we're done, their before and after will be extreme. We're out of time, but I want to thank you for coming to the show. Good stuff. Thank you, Randy, so much for inviting me. This has been fun. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.